Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be going through a war action film entitled Mosul. There will be spoilers. Chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with an exposition that the war between ISIS, known in the place as Daesh, and Iraq is coming to an end. The Nineveh SWAT team, led by Major Jassim, is the only unit that fights them every day without rest or retreat. And before the terrorist group will be gone, the Nineveh SWAT team sets out for a final mission. Then, we see three policemen being pinned down in a gunfight against the terrorist group. Kawa, one of the policemen attends to his wounded uncle while his partner Jamil fights off the enemies. The two policemen start running out of ammo when the Nineveh SWAT team arrives and rescues them. Major Jassim, then, asks the two of them what are they doing in the city to which they respond that they're making an arrest. Shortly after, the Major asks for their names to look at the lists of enemies they have. After confirming that they're not enemies, he asks them if they're wounded or their family is killed by Daesh. Kawa points out that the other policeman who has died is his uncle. Then, Major Jassim calls Kamal to give Kawa a SWAT cap. He asks about Jamil but Major Jassim says only Kawa can join his team. Kawa hesitates to take the hat at first but he ended up taking it. Then, Jamil tells him that he will take Kawa's uncle. Major Jassim, then, orders Jamil to leave the city. Before leaving, Kawa kisses his deceased uncle, and they move out. While moving, Kawa asks one of the SWAT members named Walid what is their mission, but Walid didn't directly answer his question. Afterward, they enter a building and clear it to rest, but because of the smell of the dead body, they transfer to the second floor where they found a room with a working television. The group rests for a while and when Major Jassim notices that Kawa is still guarding the windows, he orders him to sit down, telling him that they must take advantage of every rest they have. Kawa, then, sits beside Tomahawk and they share earphones to listen to music while others are watching television. Shortly after, Kawa hears something from the outside and when he checks it, he catches the attention of others. When Major Jassim looks outside the window, he sees Jamil alerting the ISIS car bomber to the location of the group. Realizing what's happening, everybody takes a cover. Unfortunately, the blast kills Tomahawk, and Major Jassim attacks Kawa. The others stop and tell him that it's not Kawa's fault, and Kawa also assures the Major that he's not a traitor. Then, Major Jassim gets Tomahawk's phone, earphones, and Tomahawk then gives it to Kawa. Afterward, they pick up Tomahawk's body and put it on the Humvee to pray for him. Another Humvee arrives and the group huddles as they talk about their plan on how to reach a certain place they're talking about. After picking the safest route for them, the team heads out. While on the road, they come across children carrying their dead father's body. Major Jassim invites them to ride with them but the eldest child declines. However, his brother wants to go with them. After their argument, the younger brother rides on the Humvee while his older brother stays behind as he continues to carry his dead father. The scene changes to the group arriving at the border of their city as they bribe the federal police guarding the border for them to pass. Then, the others take Tomahawk's body to a place where fallen citizens are placed while Major Jassim pays a family to keep and take care of the boy. Going back to the others, Kawa asks Huka why they need to bribe the federal police to enter their own city but he didn't answer Kawa as well. Then, another federal police notice that they're part of the SWAT team and calls for them. Kawa is about to answer but Huka stops him. Major Jassim, then, talks to the federal police and threatens him not to tell anyone that he has seen them. As they go out of the city again, Kawa checks the phone of Tomahawk and sees pictures of him with dead Daesh. Meanwhile, Major Jassim shares to the group that he was a homicide detective and a teacher before joining the SWAT. Walid, then, reveals that he knows because he was his teacher before. Going back to Kawa, he is frustrated that everyone is keeping him out of place and doesn't know a single thing about their mission. Huka, then, grabs the phone from him and shows him a video of Tomahawk's brother being killed by the Daesh. He tells Kawa that every time Tomahawks is losing sight of their mission, he's forcing himself to watch that video to remind him of who are they're fighting for. All of a sudden, the enemy starts shooting civilians. The SWAT shoots back but Huka is shot in the back of his head when he's reminding the citizens to keep out of the minefield. Major Jassim feels frustrated and angry that he lost another son. With this, he takes Walid and Kawa with him and they sneak into the building and kill the shooters. Afterward, Major Jassim and Walid talk about their current distance from that specific place. Meanwhile, Kawa tries to take a picture with a fallen Daesh but it suddenly breathes. He is about to finish him when Major Jassim stops him and tells him to let the man suffer. Shortly after, other SWAT members arrive and they all catch up with the plan. Later, Walid spots something from the distance and tells Major Jassim about it. It's the base of the enemies. However, they're just 10 in the group. 
Major Jassim tells Walid that it's his call if they'll continue but Walid points out that Jassim is the leader. The two argue and it ended up with Walid making a call to proceed with the mission. Then, they hear a drone flying over them and everyone is alerted. The drone goes straight down their Humvee, making an explosion. Another drone is spotted but it is taken down by a man from another building. It turns out that the people from another building are the Iranian special forces. Major Jassim talks to the man and proposes a barter of ammo in exchange for cigarettes to which the man agrees. Afterward, they meet with the Iranian special forces but they only allowed Major Jassim to go inside their building. Inside, he meets with the special forces leader, Colonel Isfahani. The two briefly talk about their groups, and then, they proceed with the barter. Colonel Isfahani wants three cartons of cigarettes in exchange for one box of ammo, but Major Jassim asserts that he wants one box of ammo for one carton of cigarettes. Colonel Isfahani agrees, but he asks Major Jassim to look at their prisoners and identify them if he knows any one of them, and the two have a deal. Outside, Kawa is worried about the Major but Kamal assures him that he can handle it. But they're surprised when Major Jassim calls Kawa and orders him to get inside. Kawa, along with every SWAT member goes inside and they're surprised to see Jamil as one of the Special Forces prisoners. Major Jassim tells Colonel Isfahani that they will take Jamil because he betrays them but the Colonel declines. Meanwhile, Jamil talks to Kawa and tells him that he only did that because the Daesh will find his family in America if he didn't follow them. The tension grows and everyone is ready to fight as the two leaders argue, when suddenly, everyone fell quiet when Kawa hacks Jamil's head with a tomahawk, killing him. After recovering from what they've seen, the two groups just continue the barter. And Walid trades their hookah for an RPG. The scene changes into the Humvee where Major Jassim reveals to Kawa the truth about their group. The reason why they can't get ammo from the base or request for backup or artillery strikes is that they disobey their orders. One month ago, they are assigned to a mission to which Major Jassim made all the plans and preparations. But two weeks later, they are transferred under a new command and they scrap their first mission. They plan to send the SWAT to a faraway village, far from their own fight in the city. Thus, they go off the radar and proceed with their first mission. Major Jassim is about to reveal the mission to Kawa when he stops him and tells him that he doesn't need to know it. Whatever their mission is, he will follow Major Jassim. Shortly after, they reach the end of the road and they need to proceed on foot. Unfortunately, as soon as they get off the Humvee, enemies start shooting them. Overwhelmed, the others ask for an RPG shot but Walid insists that it's not the time to use it yet. He, then, throws a grenade but it bounces off near a Humvee, causing Amir, who's using the machine gun who accidentally shoots Yunus due to the impact of the explosion. Kawa is injured in the face as well. Kamal immediately treats Kawa and Walid apologizes to him. On the other hand, Amir cries as he apologizes for accidentally killing his teammate, but Major Jassim consoles him. After securing that Kawa can still go, they continue to move on foot. Shortly after, they once again encounter a group of terrorists and they have to fight it using close combat. They manage to take them down, but Razak died and Shinan is wounded. With no time to grieve for their fallen brother, they collect Razak's weapon and ammo then continue moving. As they reach a certain location, Walid, Amir, and Kawa position themselves while the others are waiting for Walid's signal. He, then, shoots the RPG at the enemies, but unfortunately, it didn't explode. With no other choice, Kawa, Amir, and Walid cover Major Jassim and others from above as they move into the enemy's base and a shootout between the SWAT members and terrorists happen. The SWAT manages to take down the enemies but Arkham, unfortunately, died during the battle. Going inside the enemy's base, they immediately clear the area and Major Jassim orders them to reload and rehydrate for 90 seconds before a potential enemy reinforcement arrives. He, then, goes to a table where he spots scattered magazines. Because of his orderliness, he compiles the magazines and put them in a box. But when he lifts the box, a bomb was triggered and everybody is surprised because of the explosion. Everyone immediately attends to their commander and they're all lost of words as they see Major Jassim's bloodied dead body. Everyone is grieving the Major's death when Kawa suddenly stands up and notifies them that their 90 seconds is done. They must proceed with the mission and just come back for their dead comrades. This makes Walid and others angry, and they lose morale to continue their mission. But Kamal agrees with Kawa and convinces Walid to continue as they are just a few blocks away from their target location. Then. We see the six remaining Nineveh SWAT members, now led by Wei Deal, continue moving to finish their mission. As they enter a building, Wei Deal orders everyone to kill all the men they see. But only those with silencers will use guns, and those who do not have silencers will be using their blades. As they continue moving into the building, 
They see a mother and child and sign them to keep quiet as they continue going upstairs. Reaching a certain door, Walid immediately removes his shoe and pulls a key out of it. Nervous and shaking, he opens the door and shoots the man inside the apartment. Walid quickly goes inside and the rest of the group follows. Seeing the woman the child in the living room, Walid burst into tears as he finally sees his wife and daughter again. As Kawa watches the family reunite, he finally realizes what their mission is. Kamal, then, calls him to check on his wound and asks him if he finally understands their mission now, to which he confirms it. Kawa asks him if they will be doing this for all the members of the SWAT and Kamal responds that only those whose family is still alive. Then, he reveals to Kawa that Amir's wife is already dead, but they got information about his son's whereabouts. Asking why they are doing this, Kamal tells Kawa that this is all Major Jassim's doing. It turns out that his family was killed by Daesh commander whom he had imprisoned long ago before he joins the terrorist group. Aside from it, Major Jassim also believed that saving more children is essential in rebuilding lives in the city. Back to Walid and his family, he tells them to pack their things as they're about to leave. When he puts his vest back, his wife asks if he will not come with them to which he responds that he will always be there with them. The movie ends with Kawa standing up and putting back his mask on as he asks Amir how far is his son's location from theirs. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.